Harry Reid. This was a big deal. This is one of the bright spots for Democrats. He was able to hold off crazy Sharon Angle. If you remember the things Sharon Angle said running up to the campaign, they included that she had confusion. She defended an ad that negatively depicted illegal immigrants by saying some of the Hispanic illegal immigrants that were depicted in the in the in the video, which weren't actually illegal immigrants, they looked Asian. That was her defense. She also said we should never have abortion, even in cases of rape and incest, because you know what, Lewis? Abortion or rape and incest are part of God's plan as well. Right. So we should never have those. Ten, about 10 points she lost to Harry Reid. And this, I was watching that one closely, 50, or, or actually it looks like the, the final numbers are only five points, 50 to 45, um, about 40,000 votes separating them. We dodged a bullet on that one. Oh, I mean, O'Donnell, Palladino, and uh, and and uh, Sharon Engel. Really three that I'm glad did not make it. Now, early news last night was that Rand Paul did win. Rand Paul successfully defeated Jack Conway in Kentucky, and he is going to be the next senator, considered essentially the biggest Tea Party victory. Wouldn't you say, Lewis, from this election? Yeah, I think so. He, he's the, you know, he was like, the head of this whole thing. In a sense, he, he was at least the most the most vocal candidate. So let's take a listen to a little bit of his acceptance speech and uh, and see what, what he's thinking of doing next. I have a message. <laughs> a message from the people of Kentucky. A message. A message that is loud and clear and does not mince words. We've come to take our government back. Okay, so I won't, I won't trouble you with listening to the rest of that bizarre delivery, but there's a lot to say about this Rand Paul victory. He talked about the Tea Party tidal wave, which has sent a message to Washington. He refers to the debt crisis without mentioning, by the way, Barack Obama's deficit reducing Healthcare bill. He talks about being enslaved by debt. Well, Rand Paul will soon have to vote about the debt ceiling for the U.S., which realistically is going to have to go up. How will he vote? He has claimed many times he will not do anything that will increase the debt. What will he do, Lewis? I believe that he is not going to have a choice. My prediction is he is going to go back on that word. And we'll get the explanation from him. Well, listen, that is that is what I ran on and that is what I believe. But here in the Senate, we have to make decisions based on reality. Not in campaigns. Campaigns, reality has nothing on what you say. But once in the Senate, hey, we'll see. Which would be a big, big flip-flop, would it not? We'll see. It would definitely be, but I don't know. A little bit later, we're going to get into just exactly which of Ron Paul's, Rand Paul's predictions will be feasible. And my argument to you is going to be that not many of them. And by the way, as we go to break here, the Kentucky stomper, Tim Prophet, has been charged with fourth degree assault. This is the stomper from the from the uh, of the move on dot org member at a recent Rand Paul event. Twelve months in jail. Five hundred dollar fine is the maximum penalty. We'll see what happens with that. We'll be back on the David Pakman show. The David Pakman show at David dot com. Midweek Politics is made possible by listeners like you and by Greenfield Savings Bank, building a strong community one account at a time with neighborhood offices in Greenfield, Amherst, Conway, Shelburne Falls, South Deerfield, and Turner's Falls, and online at greenfieldsavings.com. By the Daily Hampshire Gazette and gazettenet.com, connecting our communities with local news and information. By DIF Design, specializing in custom business websites at difdesign.com. Find out more about underwriting Midweek Politics at midweekpolitics.com.